if most people are seated, I'm Mary Sugarman, I'm the president of ALI, and I just want to welcome anybody who's here from the, com from the community. We at ALI are a, an organization of retired people who get together twice a year for seven week terms to learn, to be entertained, and to socialize. We really have a good time. And if anybody's interested in joining us, uh, we'd be glad to have you. We have a website. And um, can't remember the web address, but if you look under Adult Learning Institute, it pops right up. Um, we are, we live here, here as it were, at uh, Oakland Community College. They are very good to us. We are not part of the college, but they give us a place to meet and uh, are very supportive of us. Anyway, that's really about all I have to say. I'm just glad that everybody is here. And with that, Diane Silverstein is going to introduce our wonderful musicians for this afternoon. The North Oakland Dixieland Band keeps traditional jazz alive in this age of heavy metal and rap music. The group is an outreach group for the much larger North Oakland Concert Band, which is an 85-piece band that performs at much larger venues. The Dixieland group specializes in playing for smaller venues, such as library concerts, festival performances, and senior organizations. Today the band will take us through a musical history of jazz in the United States. Please give a warm welcome for the North Oakland Dixieland Band.
Island, you just heard an old Dixieland favorite called Fidgety Feet. And we're here today to talk to you a little bit about the history of jazz. And how many of you in here have seen the Ken Burns series on public television? Oh, we got a few. So if I make some mistakes, you'll know that I'm wrong, right? Anyway, jazz is a uh, music that was originated in the United States. It's one of our only art forms here in the United States. And uh, we are very fortunate to have uh, really invented jazz here. And it came about really in the area, a lot of it came around through New Orleans. And a lot of things took place in New Orleans which made it kind of like a melting pot for jazz. For example, uh, there was a lot of uh, early church music in that area. There were uh, blues that came from the Delta that uh, came down to uh, New Orleans and uh, melted with uh, some of the uh, church music in the area. We had uh, marches. Uh, there were a lot of bands that uh, came through New Orleans. And uh, back in the Civil War days, uh, a lot of the uh, soldiers that actually played music somehow left their instruments there. So brass bands became very popular in New Orleans. So that was a, a, a great uh, place for people to start hearing jazz. And uh, one of the various earliest forms of jazz was, a, uh, was called a rag. And back in the early, uh, I should say the late 1800s, around 1880, 1890, it's a gentleman by the name of Scott Joplin that became very prominent with jazz. And uh, the early formings of jazz, I should say rags, because it really wasn't jazz at that point. And what we'd like to do now is just demonstrate a little bit of a Scott Joplin rag. We'd like to have Paul, our piano player, just play a little bit of that for you. Exactly as it was written. If you notice the rag that uh, was just played, 
It was probably played in the 1890s exactly the same way that Paul just played it here now. But in jazz what happens is you have a chorus and what happens is each musician does his own thing with the melody. So if you had a, a tune like Mary Had a Little Lamb, instead of da 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 you probably might come up with something completely different. So that's what happens in jazz. Um, they started to, uh, to uh, do their own rhythms. They started to do their own uh, take on how things should be played. So um, we have an early recording now. The earliest recording of American jazz was actually done uh, by a name, a name of a group called the Original Dixieland Jazz Band. And they made a, a recording in 1917 of a, of a tune called Livery Stable Blues. And we'd like to play that for you now. And as I said before, it was the earliest known recording of jazz music. And we'll get back to a little bit about somebody before that just a little bit. But we do want to perform this one tune for you. It's called Livery Stable Blues. And if you listen real close, you might be able to hear a, uh, a horse, maybe a cow, and maybe a rooster. <laughs> so here's Livery Stable Blues.
Hungry Stable Blues, ladies and gentlemen. Eric Kozlowski was our rooster for the day. Eric was our horse. And down in the end, Tony was our cow. <laughs> anyway. One of the other recordings that was done by uh, that very early group, and by the way, the early group was... Uh, it was interesting because most of the jazz music came out of New Orleans was done by blacks in New Orleans. Uh, the first group to record, however, was an all-white group. And uh, they also recorded another piece called um, the original Dixieland One Step. And we'd like to play that for you now. Just a little bit 
the uh, earliest known jazz trumpet player was a gentleman by the name of Buddy Bolden. Buddy Bolden was a legend, probably not only in his own mind, but <laughs> a legend around New Orleans. Because he was, the legend was that when he played the trumpet, he could be heard for 11 blocks away. And he was, a, he was the, one of the first black musicians to play jazz. And unfortunately, there are no recordings of Buddy, but uh, there are some tunes that are named after him. He was, uh, unfortunately, he uh, liked to drink a lot. And by the time he was 30 years old, uh, he was pretty much out of the business. He liked the ladies a lot, and he liked to drink a lot. Does that remind you of any musicians you might know? <laughs> anyway, he was, uh, he was a great player, and uh, we'd like to, there, there was one place that he used to play all the time, and it was right next to a place called Storyville. Does anybody know what Storyville was? You know, what was it? It was a red light district. Right, Storyville was a red light district in New Orleans. And it was a bar located right next to the a red light district. Uh, and it smelled so bad that they called it the Funky Butt Saloon. All the musicians used to call it the Funky Butt Saloon. But the interesting part about it is the next morning, on Sunday morning, they would, they would play dance music up until about midnight. And about midnight, they would go crazy and... Uh, our good friend Buddy Bolden would start playing some hot jazz and they would go until about 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning. But the, the interesting part is, is that the next morning at 8 o'clock, guess what? There was a Baptist church service in the same room. <laughs> <laughs> so, there is a song that was written for uh, Buddy and uh, it's called Buddy Bolden's Blues and it deals with that bar, but it also deals with a Somebody owes him uh, some money. Uh, he also did some uh, kind of illegal things on the side. What do you call those guys that sell women? Uh, pimps. He was a pimp on the side, too. And this guy owed him some money. So you'll hear some words in there about some, getting some money from this guy. And if he doesn't get it pretty soon, he's going to beat it out of him. So this is a pretty interesting song. It's called Buddy Bowles' Blues. And we're going to feature Eric Kozlowski on the vocal on this. Oh, 
days. Give them 30 days in the market. Take them away. Give them a good broom to sleep with. Take them away. I thought I heard him say. I thought I heard Frankie Deuce and shout. And give me my money before I beat it out. Now give me my money before I beat it on out. I thought I heard Frankie Deuce and shout. jazz musician, Kid Ori on the trombone, and King Oliver was also a very big influence back in the early days of jazz. What we'd like to do now is uh, demonstrate another uh, another uh, parade type of thing that you might hear in the streets. As a matter of fact, it's aptly named uh, South Rampart Street Parade. Where is South Rampart Street located? New Orleans, right? So we're going to do a little uh, South Rampart Street Parade.
that was an example of a march that you might hear out in the street. And uh, there are some absolutely fabulous brass bands in, uh, down in the uh, New Orleans area. We're going to play you right now someone's theme song. And we're going to ask you to guess whose theme song it was. <laughs> Included 
his now wife, Lil, and um, they did a series of recordings called the Hot Five recordings. And we have one of those recordings we'd like to play for you now. It's called the Cornet Chop Suey. Uh, this is a, 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 a solo that was done by Louis Armstrong, one of the first ones that, that he did recorded with his new group. And uh, the interesting thing about this is prior to this, most of the jazz, everybody played their own things most of the time, and you didn't get a lot of solo space. But in this particular recording, and we have a, an exact transcription of that recording, which we, we've expanded from five to eight pieces, um, the interesting part is the band does stop time. So when the band stops, the cornet keeps going. And uh, that was a relatively new innovation for back in the, uh, this is 1926 when he recorded this. So we'll do a little bit of a cornet chop suey right now. We're going to feature Eric on our cornet over here. St. James Infirmary Blouse.
sweet and so cold and so fair. Let her go, let her go, God bless her. Wherever she may be, she will search this whole wide world. But she'll never, never find another man. are about getting their pictures taken. So Nixon's decided he was going to go get uh, his picture taken with Louis. Well, the, Louis always had an issue when he wrote, when he came back to the United States because he always carried two trumpet cases. One was with a trumpet and the other one was normally filled full of pot. And uh, he was kind of worried about getting his pot back into the United States. So Nixon comes down and uh, wants to get his picture taken with Louis. So Louis says, sure, you know, so he gets his picture taken, and Nixon says, well, is there anything I can do for you? And he says, sure. He says, can you carry my trumpet case through? <laughs> anyway, 
This supposedly happened. I don't know if it's true or not, but it's a good story. So here's another Louis Armstrong tune that was done, made uh, very famous. It's called uh, Hello Dolly. And we're going to feature Eric on this. South. And uh, so Louis used to do a tune that's called Black and Blue. It's a very interesting song, and it talks about the problems of his skin being black. And we're going to feature Eric on the vocal on this. This is uh, one of my absolute favorite uh, 
Will we sing strong songs? Nancy Lipo. 
Back there on the piano, ladies and gentlemen, Paul Becker. All right, we're going to move up to the, uh, the 20s, maybe 30s. And uh, a lot of things happened back then. We were into the, uh, the flapper era. So here's a tune called The Black Bottom. This is probably one of the most popular tunes of the day. So here's a, 
the swing era became very, very uh, popular. We had the Glenn Miller Band, we had the Duke Ellington Band, we had a whole bunch of great, great bands that I had the fortunate opportunity of seeing, not in the 30s, but maybe in the late 40s, early 50s. So here's a, here's a tune that was made famous by one of those great bands. It was the um, Duke Ellington Band, and this is a audience participation song. And its name of the tune is, It Don't Mean a Thing If It Ain't Got That Swing. Now your part is, do up, 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 do up. Got it? Everybody got it? You gotta help me on this now, I can't do it by myself. Okay? So we're gonna do a little, do up, 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 do up. Okay?
change and uh, we started getting into bebop. You might remember uh, Charlie Parker, a fantastic saxophone player, unbelievable, and he and his, he and his buddy Dizzy Gillespie did a lot of uh, bebop stuff. Well, we didn't bring any stuff with us today because that stuff is so difficult you need to be a genius to play it, but you also need a, a bass player and we have a tuba today so we can't quite hack through that. But we did bring something that's pretty close. Uh, what Charlie Parker used to do was he would write tunes and what he would do is he would steal chord changes from other popular tunes. And one of the, uh, one of the tunes that he uses was I've Got Rhythm and all the jazzers call it the rhythm changes. Bum, 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 One, six, two, five is what we call it. So anyway, uh, we brought along a tune like that. Uh, and it's fairly, uh, it was a fairly popular tune a few years ago, and probably still is. It's called the Flintstones. And we'd like to do that as a, our contribution to the uh, bebop era. But it's not really bebop, but it's close. Anyway, so here we go. Little uh, rhythm changes.
guitarist Mike Ulrich. Oh, when the sea 
education. What is your name? Well, we sure have enjoyed playing for you all today. It's been great. Thank you very much for coming. What is your name? Mr. George Sinnott leads the band. George, oh. be well.